Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about resonance structures and formal charge. So the definition of a resonance structure is that there are multiple correct versions of Lewis dot structures for a given molecule. They only differ in the location of the electrons, that's very important. But they have the same atom to atom connections and the same overall number of electrons. And then formal charge here, I make the, the definition very easy. It's simply the number of valence electrons in a neutral atom minus the number of dots plus the number of lines. So I'll show you how to use that. And actually formal charge helps us pick the quote unquote best resonance structure uh, because the best resonance structures have the lowest formal charges. And if we do have to have a formal charge, it's better to place the negative formal charges on the most electronegative elements and the positive formal charges on the least electronegative elements. So I'm gonna go through an example here of drawing resonance structures. And in order to do this, of course, we have to draw Lewis dot structures. So I have the rules right here for drawing a Lewis dot structure. So for CO2, let's go ahead and draw this. So step one, I pick a central atom. And this is gonna be the atom that I only have one of. So I'll pick carbon. So I'll draw the first uh, resonance structure here. And then I'm going to attach my outer atoms to draw my skeleton structure. So I'll attach my oxygens. And then I have to distribute my valence electrons. So how many valence electrons do I have to work with? Well, from the carbon, I know carbon is in group 4A. So it will contribute four valence electrons whereas the oxygens will each contribute six valence electrons since they're in group 6A. So in total, I have 16 valence electrons to work with. So I'll start distributing those around my molecule here. So I'll go ahead and start satisfying the octet rule for the outer oxygen atoms. They each need six electrons because they're already getting two each from these bonds. Each bond here is worth two shared electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons on this oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons on this oxygen. So they both have eight electrons, they're happy. But the problem is this carbon also wants eight electrons, and it's only getting one, two, three, four right now. So the only way that we can give this carbon more electrons is to borrow some from these lone pairs and turn this into a bond. Now here we have a double bond. So now carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So we're getting closer to its satisfying its octet. It wants eight. Well, what if we stole some from over here and started sharing them? So now carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its, uh, in its valence shell and the oxygens still both have satisfied octets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the same for this oxygen. But we could have done this a little bit differently. Let me explain. So we could have drawn this the same way we did before, where we attached our oxygens to the central atom and drew our skeleton structure, started distributing our electrons on our outer atoms to satisfy their octets, And then we would recognize that carbon doesn't have a satisfied octet, so we would start sharing some electron pairs with carbon to make these double bonds. But then what if instead of going over to this side to share a lone pair from this oxygen, we simply took another one from this oxygen and made this into a triple bond. Notice how carbon still has a satisfied octet now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this oxygen still has a satisfied octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's actually a third way we could have drawn this. So let's say we started off like we did before. Sorry, I'll fix that there. I can't draw. <laughs> and we started drawing our electrons on our outer atoms here. Well, let's say we started sharing from this oxygen first this time and made this into a double bond. And then we took another lone pair from this oxygen and made this into a triple bond. Now the triple bond is on this side. So these are all correct resonance structures. So how do we pick which one is the best? We know they're all correct. And by the way, a resonance structure is simply 
a form in which this molecule exists in nature at least part of the time. So maybe we'll, we'll find out that this is the best resonance structure right here. So maybe carbon dioxide spends 90% of its time in this structure, 5% of its time in this structure, and 5% of its time in this structure. But the point is they're all correct. These are all possible forms of carbon dioxide that you could find in nature. Well, I said in order to pick the best resonance structure, we have to calculate the formal charges because the best resonance structure has the lowest formal charges. So let's calculate the formal charges for each atom in each molecule. So the formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom minus the number of dots plus the number of lines. So for oxygen here, the number of valence electrons in a neutral oxygen is six because it's in group 6A. And it has how many dots? One, two, three, four. How many lines attached to it? One, two. So its formal charge is six minus six, or zero. What about this carbon? Well, its formal charge is gonna be number of valence electrons in a neutral carbon, which is four, minus the number of dots well, we don't have any dots, but number of lines is one, two, three, four. So four minus four is zero. So this is looking pretty good. We, we, we like formal charges of zero. The lowest formal charges mean that this is the best resonance structure. So let's test this oxygen. Well, it's actually gonna be the same as this oxygen. We start out with six valence electrons in a neutral atom minus the number of dots plus the number of lines. So this is gonna be four dots plus two lines, so six minus six, again is zero. So this is a very good resonance structure. This is probably the best. Let's make sure that these aren't any better because you know you really can't beat this. The best you can do is tie it. So this oxygen, again, it has a valence of six in a neutral oxygen, minus the number of dots, which is one, two, plus the number of lines, which is one, two, three, Okay, here's a non-zero formal charge. This formal charge is six minus five, which is one, and it's actually a plus one. What about this carbon? Well, the valence electrons in a neutral atom, that never changes. Four minus number of dots, we don't have any, but the number of lines is one, two, three, four. So four minus four, that's zero, so that's good. And this oxygen, we have the Valence electrons in a neutral oxygen are six, minus the number of dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the number of lines, plus one. So six minus seven is negative one. So here we have a plus one charge on this oxygen and a minus one charge on this oxygen. So this resonance structure is actually inferior to the first one. Even though it's still technically a correct Lewis dot structure, it's going to be a form in which carbon dioxide spends less of its time in nature. So if you notice here, this last molecule is simply a reflection of the second molecule. So we know that this oxygen is gonna look like this oxygen. So this oxygen has the same formal charge as this one did, plus one. This carbon has the same formal charge this one did. And then this oxygen looks like this oxygen, so it's gonna have a negative one charge. So really these last two structures are pretty much just mirrored reflections of each other. And they are equivalently correct as uh, resonance structures, as far as resonance structures go. So I hope this made sense and I wanna move on to another example now. Okay, the next molecule for which I'd like to draw the resonance structures is CNO minus. So the first step again is to pick a central atom and it turns out the central atom is usually the one that's the least electronegative. So if you look here, C, N, and O, if we want to figure out which one is the least electronegative, we actually look at the periodic table. So on the periodic table, the trend is as you go to the right and as you go up, electronegativity increases. So if you notice here an element like fluorine in the top right, this is actually the most electronegative element of them all. And as you go down and to the left, you become less electronegative. So if you notice here, carbon is the most uh, far to the left out of these three elements. So it is going to be our central atom. So I'll go ahead and pick that up for my central atom. I'll attach my outer atom. So drawing my skeleton structure. And 
Now I need to distribute my valence electrons. So in order to do that, I'll, I'll count up how many I have to work with. So carbon will contribute four, because it's in group 4A. Nitrogen will contribute five, because it's in group 5A. Oxygen will contribute six, because it's in six, group 6A. And then this extra negative charge up here, this represents an extra electron for our structure. So we have a total of four plus five plus six. So this is 15 and then 16 total valence electrons to work with. So I'll start placing these on my outer atoms here. So oxygen, we know it, it, it needs eight electrons. So we'll put six here because it already has two from that bond. So now we've satisfied its octet rule. And then we'll put some on this nitrogen. We know it wants eight as well. So before I go any further, let's see how many I've used up. So six here on these lone pairs, then eight from that bond. So six plus two is eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 15, 16. So I've used up all of my electrons now, right? I've used 16 valence electrons for my structure. So does everything have a satisfied octet? That's the last step. We have to adjust bonds and lone pairs to satisfy the octet rule. So oxygen, we said six plus two, so it's got eight, so it's happy. Carbon, however, is not happy. It only has one, two, three, four electrons in its outer shell, and it wants eight. Nitrogen, well, it wants eight, and it, it's happy because it's got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So how can we give carbon more electrons here. Think about this. How could we, uh, similar to the last problem, how could we let carbon borrow some of the electrons from the other atoms? Well, it turns out we can just take one of these lone pairs and make it into a double bond. And we could take one of these lone pairs and make this into a double bond. So while leaving the, the valence electrons unaffected on the nitrogen and the oxygen, they still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have satisfied carbon's octet. Now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a valid Lewis dot structure for this uh, molecule. But we could have done this in a few different ways, as you may guess. So I'm gonna draw the next resonance structure over here. So let's say we started out the same way. Carbon in the center. And then we started distributing our, our uh, electrons around the outer atoms. And we knew that, okay, now nitrogen and oxygen are happy, but carbon, it wants more electrons, right? So how can we adjust for this? Well, we'll take this lone pair. And what if this time, instead of taking one from the oxygen, we took another one from the nitrogen? So notice nitrogen still has a satisfied octet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon still has a satisfied octet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we could have done this even another way. What if we had made the triple bond over here? So let's see how we would have done that. So again, we, we would have drawn all these electrons on the outer atoms to satisfy their octets. And let's say this time we took from the oxygen. So I'll take these and make these into a double bond. And I'll take these and make these into a, tri a triple bond now. So three valid Lewis dot structures. These all represent resonance structures for CNO minus. So in order to pick the best one, we have to calculate the formal charges. And remember, we want the lowest formal charges and it's better to have negative formal charges on the more electronegative elements and positive formal charges on the less electronegative elements. So nitrogen's formal charge here, the valence electrons in a neutral nitrogen atom are five minus and then the number of dots, one, two, three, four, plus the number of lines, one, two. So the, the formal charge of this atom is five minus six or negative one, and then carbon, Neutral carbon has four valence electrons, and then minus the number of dots, zero, plus the number of lines, one, two, three, four. So four minus four is zero. And then oxygen, formal charge, so the neutral atom of oxygen has six valence electrons, minus number of dots, one, two, three, four, plus the number of lines, one, two. So six minus six is zero. 
So not bad, all we had was a negative one formal charge on the nitrogen. But, you know, we really would have preferred this negative one on the oxygen, right? Because this is by far the most electronegative element of the three. Well, let's test the next one. So nitrogen, again, a, a neutral nitrogen has five electron in, electrons in its valence shell, minus number of dots, plus the number of lines. Five minus five is zero, okay? Then the carbon, so neutral carbon has four, and then minus the number of dots plus the number of lines, so we only have four lines. So four minus four, zero. And then oxygen, there's six electrons in a neutral oxygen. So, I'm sorry, six valence electrons in a neutral oxygen, minus the number of dots, which is six, plus the number of lines, which is one. So six minus seven, negative one. Okay, still we only had one negative one formal charge, but this time it was on the more electronegative element. So, so far this Lewis dot structure is better than this one. This resonance structure is probably more correct. And in that, in that sense, we can say that CNO spends more time looking like this than it does like this. So let's do this last one. And if you notice here, this is actually um, sort of a, a mirror reflection of this one, but the problem is the, the atoms are not symmetrical. In this case, there's a nitrogen with a double bond here and an oxygen with a double bond here. So don't make the mistake of thinking this is like carbon dioxide where you can just assume everything is a mirror reflection. These have different atoms and thus it's not perfectly symmetrical. So let's go through carefully. So nitrogen is going to be 5 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5 minus 7, negative 2. Uh, so that, that's not looking too good, right? Negative 2 is a big charge and that's on not so electronegative of an element. Carbon, we've got four valence electrons in a neutral carbon minus four lines. So zero, okay? And then oxygen, we've got six valence electrons in a neutral oxygen minus one, two, three, four, five. Six minus five is one, plus one. So clearly, this is the worst resonance structure of them all, right? Because it has the highest formal charges and it has the most formal charges. So if we were to rank these, formal these uh, resonance structures in terms of their correctness, we would say that this is the best one, this is the second best one, and this is the third best one. So in other words, in nature, CNO- would spend most of its time looking like this, the second most amount of, t of its time looking like this, and the third most amount of its time looking like this.